لفت صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد الخليفة ولي العهد نائب القائد الأعلى النائب الأول لرئيس مجلس الوزراء إلى أنه في حين يتركز انتباه العالم على التطورات السياسية في منطقة الشرق الأوسط فأنه يتوجب كذلك الانتباه إلى المحرك الذي يدفع بالحل والكامن في التنمية الاقتصادية وتطوير التعليم وما ينضوي عليه ذلك من تعزيز الفرص جاء ذلك في الكلمة التي ألقاها سموه في جلسة القادة بالمنتدى العالمي التاسع للاقتصاد الإسلامي الذي بدأت عمله صباح اليوم في العاصمة البريطانية لندن بتنظيم مشترك من حكومتي ماليزيا والمملكة المتحدة وبمشاركة جلالة الملك عبد الله الثاني عاهل المملكة الأردنية الهاشمية وجلالة السلطان حسن بلقية سلطان بروناي والسيد ديفيد كاميرون رئيس وزراء المملكة المتحدة وفخامة السيدة عطيفة يحيى آغا رئيسة كوسوفو وفخامة السيد حامد كرزاي رئيس أفغانستان وعدد من رؤساء الوفود Your Majesties, Your Highness, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to be addressing you today at this important conference to explore the future of Islamic finance and economy. It is, it is significant that this is the first occasion that this event has taken place outside of the Muslim world. And it is significant that it is being held here in London. London is a cornerstone of the global financial system. As Asia finishes its day, London starts, and it passes the baton west at the close of its day. It is a city renowned the world over as a center for trade and for a unique openness and international outlook. I would, like, I would like to thank His Excellency Prime Minister Cameron and His Excellency Prime Minister Dato Sri Abdul Razak for hosting this conference the Honorable Baroness Varsi for so effectively promoting this event, and to congratulate the Honorable Tun Musa Hitam, Chairman of the WIEF, on the growth of this event to what it is today. All of us gathered here understand the absolute fundamental importance of economic development, which this forum helps enhance. Economic development thrives through, inter through interdependence. Growth in one country brings growth to others. It is a virtuous cycle. This year's forum looks at our changing world and new relationships. It speaks very firmly to my personal agenda and that of my country. While in the Middle East, we are not the entirety of the Islamic world, undoubtedly, the world's focus has been on our political developments. But the driver, the catalyst, and ultimately the solution to our region's issues lies as much in economic development, in enhanced opportunity, and in education. Through these, there is the opportunity of delivering lasting transformative change and prosperity across class, religion, sect, tribe, and race. By accepted estimates, in the Arab world, over 100 million jobs must be created in order to meet the population swell the region currently faces from one of the fastest growing youth populations in the world. This is an issue Bahrain recognized over 40 years ago, introducing a raft of programs aimed squarely at diversifying our economy and investing in education and skills development. It is a program I am passionate about and which I will continue to drive and evolve to meet the challenges of this generation. A major aspect of the work that has been undertaken in Bahrain has been around the development of industries that act as net multipliers within the economy. This work centers on the recognition that the private sector has a pivotal role to play as the engine of growth and productivity, and that investment in people is as important as investment in infrastructure. 
Strong financial institutions and regulatory frameworks form a central element in this approach, and these in and of themselves help drive job creation, something London knows very well. Our long-standing strength in financial services has served to benefit the growth of many other sectors as well. It has helped facilitate private sector funding for large-scale government infrastructure projects in housing and transport. It has also resulted in private investment in high produ productivity sectors such as manufacturing, petrochemicals, tourism and real estate, all of which has helped create jobs and boost economic growth. As Bahrain sits at the heart of the rapidly growing GCC market, the Gulf Cooperation Council, valued at over $1.5 trillion today, the Kingdom's financial sector has also played a role in fulfilling the funding needs of the wider region. And today, with the growth of Islamic finance, we proudly host the largest concentration of Islamic financial institutions in the region. Islamic finance has grown rapidly in recent years. As a whole, it is now valued, according to some estimates, in excess of $1.2 trillion globally. This growth has primarily been supported by three factors. Firstly, and naturally, this has occurred through the continued and fast growth in many of the economies of the Islamic world, home to 1.5 billion Muslims. Secondly, it has been supported by international investors looking to gain access to these markets. And thirdly, from observable growth coming from non-Muslim investors looking for what have become known as ethical investments, um, products that adopt the principles which underpin this area of finance. With such potential and opportunity on offer, there are, no, there are now challenges to meet in order for the scale of demand to be matched, while ensuring that the religious foundation on which it is built and from which it gains its strength is preserved. Ultimately, there is a need to bolster and standardize the regulation of the industry as it develops. This means ensuring a universality of application to keep the industry attractive, reliable, and trusted and able to meet the ever-growing demand. The industry could also benefit from new asset classes like private equity, infrastructure and liquidity products, while supply of some products such as sukuk, which still do not, meet, uh, do not match demand, is increased or are increased. Importantly, to help facilitate this growth, we must also empower and elevate those organizations that already exist to apply regulation and enshrine accepted standards. We have organizations like this one, like AOFI and others capable of aiding the industry's development by protecting its fundamental attribute, the ability to deploy for Muslim and non-Muslim investors in a Sharia-compliant compli Sharia fashion. By ensuring these organizations retain full inter independence while strengthening, the, strengthening their ability to operate, we can ensure the industry has a scalability to meet the growing demand and this is very important here, while protecting the spiritual and ethical mandate that gives it its fundamental acceptance among the consumers. This is key. With this in mind, Bahrain as a host to a number of organizations committed to the industry's development is absolutely committed to working with our fellow pioneer Malaysia, as well as with emerging hubs such as London, to aid Islamic finance, finances growth. And in that spirit, I would like to invite you all to Bahrain at some time in the future to hold another meeting so that we can further this good work. <laughs> Through greater cooperation, trade and the exchange of ideas, markets can be explored, opportunities developed and ultimately jobs created, helped by key multilateral events like this. And Islamic finance serves as a key example of the potential and opportunity we have in our grasp. It is one we cannot afford to lose. And in conclusion, I would like to thank you for your time. I look forward to hearing and absorbing all of your valuable contributions that will be made over the days ahead. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.